Hi Leo, welcome to your April 2021 Tarot and Astrology reading. So Leo, Aries season is fire for you. It's full of that beautiful Aries fire sign energy for you. This is a time when you can tap into your higher self, you can tie into your philosophical self, you can really start seeing the bigger picture in your life, you can start seeing things from a bird's eye view. You can start seeing patterns on what it is that you've been doing, what's been working, what's not been working. And the Aries new moon on the 11th or the 12th is a perfect opportunity for you, Leo, to broaden your horizons and decide what it is in the next chapter you would like to accomplish, what it is you'd like to manifest for yourself, what it is that you would like in terms of aspirations, goals, partnership, romance, anything that really sets your heart on fire, anything where you've had recently an idea. And you will know, I think, with this full moon what you should be manifesting. And by should be, I mean you'll have a hunch, you will have a higher perspective on the past, you'll have a higher perspective on why things went a certain way. And if you listen to that little wise inner philosopher that you possess, you'll get a clue as to what it is that you can manifest next. Because what your lesson is is where your blessing is. So that is what the new moon is for you. There's a lot of fire sign energy. And then we're gonna move into Taurus season. And Taurus season will be a time when you can focus on your career and your family because the Scorpio full moon at the end of the month is going to be a lot to do with your family, spending more time with your family, spending more time with your loved ones, your home, deciding what it is that you want in terms of your living space. But with so much going on, strength card, uh, in your career, in the end of the month, you're going to have to be very patient with people. You're going to have to be very patient with your projects, your work colleagues, your loved ones. You're a source of support for your family. You're the person that they're calling on. You're the person that people want to talk to. They want to open up to. They want to give to. And a lot of it is to do, Leo with the fact that you're making some significant changes in the boundaries you have at work. I think a lot of you are maybe realizing you've been giving too much. Some of you are realizing you've been receiving too little. And in terms of your work life, in terms of the feelings that it brings around, I think a lot of you want a fresh start. Six of Pentacles, the Ace of Pentacles and the Death card. What you've been thinking about ending for a while and as a fixed sign, sometimes ending anything in your life is hard to do. But whether it is a belief in terms of your relationships, or maybe it's a belief in terms of your work, or maybe it is a desire in terms of your work. You've been thinking about leaving something behind for a while or making a substantial change, especially as far as your money and your material resources go. You've been thinking of making a change. And that Scorpio full moon is saying, no, it's saying, what are we going to do next? What's coming for you? It's time to figure out where you're investing your most precious currency. And I don't mean money, I mean time. Your time is your most precious thing. And with Uranus in Taurus conjuncting a lot of the main planets in April and even in May, you're really going to want a little bit more independence, a bit more freedom, especially financial. And based on the decision that you make, what you're choosing to leave behind, you're leaving it behind for something much better. Six of Wands, Three of Cups, success. And the decision you're making for yourself in terms of what you want to leave behind, the past version of yourself, the past way of doing things, the past is now something that is a closed chapter for you and everyone around you is really happy about it. People are celebrating you at the end of the month for your success and your choices and your changes. That Scorpio full moon, Leo, is saying that if you have a boundary you want to put up if you're deciding to take a sabbatical, cut your R's, start your own side business, if you're deciding to um, apply for university, if you're applying for that course, if you're leaving that job for something else, if you're starting to look for something else, everyone around you is saying yes, yes. Or if you're leaving behind that relationship that is draining you and is not a give and take equal relationship people around you especially your friends are saying yay and for a lot of you some well some Leos 
a very close friend or a sibling may be celebrating an engagement and you have to buy a hat. There's that. So let's keep going with the good changes. The changes you're making around the Scorpio full moon, what you're choosing to leave behind, people are saying yes. If you're saying, do you know what? I'm finally over that person. Your friends are going, yay. If you're saying, do you know, I'm going to start looking for other jobs. I feel really drained here. People are going to go, yay. <laughs> People really want to celebrate you. And oh, look, eight of wands. It takes off really well. That's funny. Three of cups, eight of wands. Your networking, your ability to meet the right people is highlighted this month highlighted you're able to connect you're able to make connections you're being talked about you're being thought about and what's worse than being talked about not being talked about none of that you're on everyone's minds in terms of professional qualities people are recommending you people are looking for you people are headhunting you people want to hear what you have to say especially the water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. If you're dealing with a water sign that you're dating, you're in a relationship with, you guys are planning things. You're planning things. You're planning events. You're planning parties. Maybe that's something that you guys can do. We can't do that here. But if you can, happy for you, not jealous or anything. Making plans, having conversations. And you know, when Mars moves into Cancer here, you're ready to deal with some stuff you're ready to put a bit of action in place with your 12th house and I want to tell you about the 12th house because when Mars goes into cancer you're going to feel it you know it's it's always anytime there's a planet you know rummaging around in your 12th house it's always a background energy that you can't really avoid it's a theme going on and with Mars going through there what it's saying is listen carefully to what angers you what really pushes your buttons? What is really irritating you? That's what you need to work on. That's where you need to put some energy. So in the background, and bear in mind that because Mars in your 12th house, this rummaging around, this listening to what's irritating you, what's provoking you, what's triggering you, uh, that energy is supporting your career and your long-term professional development. And what it's not supporting, what it's challenging is actually your health. So if you don't listen to that little, uh, you know, when you, if you don't pay attention, if you don't choose to be conscious with what's annoying you, what's bugging you and really feel into it and say, what's driving this? Why is this so irritating? If you don't listen to that, you'll feel your health suffer from, for some whatever reason. You'll feel tired, you'll feel lethargic, you'll feel worn down and if you decide to listen to what maybe that psychological itch, as I would call it, that, that feeling that you just can't escape, uh, if you listen to it and you decide to work on it, you will feel your vitality increase. So that's something to bear in mind as well. When Mars goes into Cancer, which it will at the end of the month, and it will be in harmony with that Scorpio full moon in your fourth house, your deep inner world is lit up at that moment to ask you how you really feel and because Mars is moving into the 12th house sometimes Mars can force when it's in the 12th house it can force an ending it can force these feelings about where you are to this to the top so if you're in a job you really hate it can force those feelings upwards but Mars is all about action so in the 12th house it's saying we need to work on this we need to act on this we need to move past this we need to push past this we need to make a change so that my inner world is better and then what happens the fool you are ready for a new start when Mars goes into Leo which it will in a month or two. The Scorpio full moon is ooh, the Scorpio full moon is a funny one because it's asking you to have faith in endings rather than faith in new beginnings. But because the full energy is here, you're being catapulted into a new beginning just by accepting that maybe something in your life you're kind of over. You're kind of done with it. And you have a bit of a mental challenge, a bit of an energetic challenge to new beginnings 
uh, because you're a fixed sign, you've trouble, four of pentacles, letting go. You've trouble embracing this change. You've trouble um, putting your faith in these new beginnings. But throughout the uncertainty of a new beginning, Leo, with that seven of cups, nine of pentacles, throughout the uncertainty, you're going to end up in a much better place material, materially and financially if you decide that you want to open yourself to possibilities. I'm not saying about taking impossible risks. Um, and what I mean by impossible risks is when, you know, you set yourself up for a fail mentally by having no belief in it. You know, it's kind of like when people play the lottery. So there's, <laughs> I think when people think of the lottery, uh, I see a lot of people saying, you know, with good luck things are like manifesting that lottery win and people can win it. You know, th that's kind of an obvious fact. The odds may seem slim because so many people play it, um, but people can win it. And the people that win it, I think, from what I read, they conducted a survey and the people all said, oh, I just knew I was going to win it. Like they have that, I just knew it. The people that buy a lottery ticket and say, I really don't think I'm going to win it, but they buy the ticket anyway. That puts them in a negative financial place because they're putting their money towards something they don't believe in, right? It's like if you take a job and you say, I really don't think this job's going to go very well. What's the point? <laughs> What's the point? You're setting yourself up to fail because you're going in with an attitude that's quite hard to change. So if you're looking to make a change in your life financially, career-wise, relationship-wise, don't set yourself up for failure by saying, I don't really believe in this. I don't really have faith in this. You know, if you're, you're in a mindset in any capacity where you don't feel good about making a change, don't make one. You know, just don't. But if you're knowing at this point with Mars going into Cancer saying, we need to act on this. There's something that's not quite right here. It's not sitting well with you around that Scorpio full moon. If it's saying, we need to make a change. And you said, you know what? I have faith that making a change is a good idea. I'm going to start looking. I'm going to start small. If I'm lacking in faith, I'm going to make baby steps. I'm going to... Um, just have a little bit of faith and make a little bit of a movement and see what happens. That's fair. But if you're thinking, I'm really done with this, I'm going to leave it behind, but I don't feel like anything's on the horizon, don't make a change. Don't make a change. Uh, but I think you will. And I think it will be based on faith. It will be based on trusting that you have enough, trusting that you have enough for you, going for you, to make big moves for yourself, to start a journey that you're excited about. And with the Nine of Pentacles, having that faith to embrace a bit of change in your life is really going to be liberating and it's going to be liberating especially in terms of your work your finances and your self-worth and if you're dealing with a water sign because they seem to be showing up quite a bit in your readings we will get into them in the extended bit so let's do your animal spirit cards and see what we have for leo so your animal spirit card for your animal spirit messenger for april is <laughs> The unicorn and the fish. So some of you could really be dealing with a Pisces person in a big way. Okay, so the unicorn is exactly what we were just talking about in terms of having faith. You know, the unicorn is that energy of, did I imagine this? Is it real? It's when you gaslight yourself. You know, you have an idea, you have a talent and you think, did I imagine that? Is that real? Did that really happen? Do I really have this? Did I just think I had this? You know when you start gaslighting yourself and you think, well, maybe I'm actually wrong about this. Maybe I don't have this talent. Maybe I don't. Maybe this feeling that something's on the horizon isn't real. No, it's real. Just because you can't see it yet doesn't mean it won't exist or doesn't mean it doesn't exist. That's what faith is all about anyway, in any capacity, whether you're celebrating Easter or not whether you're celebrating Ostara or not, it is that you have faith in something, be it the planet, be it the land, be it humanity, be it a god, be it a universe, be it yourself. You know, you spend every day with yourself and if that's not, not enough evidence that you are here, that you're present, that you're who you're meant to be, then you'll have trouble believing in anything. So the fish card is asking you, especially around the Aries new moon, do you see that red moon there, that red crescent moon? 
Between the Aries, New Moon and the Full Moon in Scorpio, that Mars driven energy, when Mars is in Gemini and it is trining with Jupiter, asking you to acknowledge that you have the stamina, you have the belief, you have the aspirations and that you're capable of great things, you're capable of great love. It's asking you in that middle point to check in and saying, are you aligned with the belief that you can have what you want to have, that you can go for this, that you can make something, that you can play the long game. What about that? Or do you feel like you're just swimming upstream? If you feel like you're swimming upstream, you need to have more belief in the process, more belief in yourself, more belief in the universe, whatever it is that you want to believe in. You have to believe in something this month because it's airy season and it's asking you to. In fact, it's not asking you to, it's telling you to. The astrology only gives us the clues of what we need to do. So I'm going to do um, another card from another deck before we get into the extended. Let's go. Oh, right off the bat. <laughs> Mary Magdalene popped out. Love yourself, others in every situation, no matter what the outward appearances may be. Unconditional love. When Mars goes into the 12th house. Did you ever notice how close the name Mary is to Mars. I mean, just take away the Y. Replace it with an S. And Mars is actually going into your sector of unconditional love. That seems like a stretch. It seems like a reach to try and get this card tied into everything. It's not really. Mars is asking you to access that unconditional love. Mars in the 12th is about transcendence. It's saying, use that unconditional love. Have that unconditional faith, that unconditional belief. And also with Mars in the 12th house, forgive yourself for whatever it is you need to forgive yourself for. Release whatever's holding you back. And let's hop into the extended. See you there, Leo. Bye. <laughs> 